सो हाई एवरी वन माई नेम इज शिवम बोहरा आई एम अ थर्ड ईयर कंप्यूटर साइंस इंजीनियरिंग स्टूडेंट फ्रॉम देहरादून आई लव सॉल्विंग प्रॉब्लम एंड आई ऑल्सो लव टू टीच वेलकम टू आवर चैनल लर्न कंपेटेटिव प्रोग्रामिंग विद कोड शेयर सो इफ यू आर इंटरेस्टेड इन कंपेटेटिव प्रोग्रामिंग एंड वॉन्ट टू लर्न इन मास्टर डेटा स्ट्रक्चर्स एंड एलगोरिदम्स देन दिस इज अ वन स्टॉप डेस्टिनेशन फॉर यू हेयर वी पोस्ट वीकली प्रॉब्लम एक्सप्लेनेशन conceptual videos on various programming paradigms and also conduct live problem solving sessions so before we actually get started here's a reminder for you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already yet so in this video we are going to solve even differences which appeared in january lunch time the difficulty level is cake walk and the prerequisites are none so the problem statement says that we have an array of size n and we have to make sure that the pair wise difference in this array is always even that is you can take any two elements from this array and you have to make sure that the difference between those two elements is always even and this should be the case for any two elements that are taken from this array that is if i take this 6 and this 2 so the difference between the two is 4 which is even so this should be the case for any two elements that are taken from this array so more formally i can write it as if i take two elements from this array one at ith position and one at jth position where i and j could be as small as 1 and i and j could be as big as n then ai minus aj should always be even so to satisfy this condition what you can do is you can select an element from this array let's say you selected the element ak where ak is the element at the kth position in this array so let's say you selected ak then what you can do is you can replace this ak by ak plus 1 and this thing would be considered as a single operation so you have to find the minimum number of such operations required to satisfy this condition so firstly let's say i take two numbers 2 and 3 from this array so the difference between the two is 3 minus 2 which is 1 which is odd so the difference between the two numbers is odd so clearly our condition is being violated so what i can do is i can perform this operation on this number which is 3 so i'll replace this 3 by 3 plus 1 which is 4 so now i have 4 at this position and now the difference between these two numbers is 4 minus 2 which is 2 and which is even so for these two numbers now this condition is true but what about the rest of the numbers so clearly all the numbers over here are even and if you take any two numbers out of these numbers then you will get an even difference so this condition is now true for all these elements so the number of operations it took to convert our array into such an array which satisfy this conditions is 1 which is this one so the minimum number of such operations required to satisfy this condition in this case is 1 so 1 is the answer for this case so moving on to the approach firstly i'll take two numbers from this array now we know that the difference is never negative that is even you even if you have 4 2 or 2 4 then in both the cases you will find the difference as 4 minus 2 that is you will find the difference as larger minus smaller 
Similarly, in this case, if you take two numbers from this array, then you will find the difference as the larger number minus the smaller number, no matter what their order is. So, we know that there is a possibility, possibility that two numbers in this array could be equal like this 3 and this 3. So in this case, both the larger one and the smaller one would be equal to each other and we will get a zero difference. So what this means is that this larger one is either greater than or equal to this smaller number. So after this, we know that for this larger number, we have two possibilities that is either it could be even or either it could be odd. And similarly, the smaller one could also be either even or odd. So in total, we have four different possibilities that is either I have to subtract an even number from another even number or an odd number from an even number or an even number from an odd number or an odd number from another odd number. So in total, we can have these four possibilities. So in the first case, we are subtracting an even number from another even number. So let's say uh, if I take two even numbers like 8 and 4, so 8 minus 4 is 4, or if I take 12 and 6, so 12 and 6 is 6, or if I take 10 and 4, so 10 minus 4 is also 6. So in all these cases, on subtracting an even number from another even number, I'm getting an even number. And if you continue with any pair of two such numbers, then in all these cases, you will get the result as an even number. Now, to mathematically prove this, what I'll do is, I'll simply write this even number as 2h where this h could be an integer and similarly I will write this second one as 2k and I know that I have to subtract the second one from the first one so I'll write it as 2h minus 2k I'll take two common so it would be 2 in brackets h minus k. Now I know that this h could be an integer and similarly this k could be an integer. So on subtracting an integer by an integer, I'll get an integer. So 2 multiplied by an integer would result in an even integer. So this means that this third number would be an even integer. So yeah. For the first case, I can write it as on subtracting even from even, I'll get an even number. And for the second case, where I'm subtracting an odd number from an even number, like I am subtracting 8 minus 5, so I'll get 3, which is an odd number. And if I take 10 and 3, so I'll get 7, which is again an odd number. So if you take an even number and you'll subtract it from an odd number, then you'll always get an odd number. To mathematically prove this, what I'll do is I'll break this even number as 2h, where h is again an integer, and I'll break this odd number as 2 k plus 1 where k is an integer so 2k is even and plus 1 is odd so o is odd so again i'll subtract the first one uh, from the second one so now i can take uh, this 2 as common so 2h minus k minus 1 so now we know that h is an integer, k is an integer, so h minus k would also be an integer. Twice an integer would result in an even number and on subtracting 1 from an even number, 
I'll get an odd number. So this would always result in an odd number. Similarly, for the third case, where first is odd and second is even, here let's say I have 7 and second one is 4, so 7 minus 4 is 3, or let's say first is 11 and second is 8, so 11 minus 8 is again 3. So similarly, if you subtract an odd number from an even number, then you will always have an odd number. And the mathematical proof is again the same as we have seen in the first two cases. And for the last category, odd minus odd, let's say I have two numbers, one is 5 and second is 3, so 5 minus 3 is 2. And similarly, let's say we have 6, not 6, let's say we have 7 and second number is 1, so 7 minus 1 is again 6. So if you subtract an odd number by another odd number, then you will get an even number. And the mathematical proof is again the same. Firstly, you will write this first odd number as 2h plus 1 and the second one as 2k plus 1. You will subtract the second one from the first one. So this will give me 2h plus 1 bracket open 2k minus 1. So plus 1 minus 1 cancelled. So this will get, uh, give me 2 in brackets h minus k. Now I know that this is an integer and this is again 2. So 2 multiplied by an integer would give me an even integer. So this will give me an even number. So these are the four conditions. Now by looking at these two conditions, I can see that if one of the two elements is even and the other is odd, then in that case, we will have odd difference. This also means that if our array has some combination of odd and even elements, then the odd and even element will pair up and will form odd differences. So these two conditions wants us to have an array which should not contain a combination of even or odd elements. And this means that the array should have either only even elements or it should either have only odd elements. So now we will try to convert our array into one of these two arrays that is either our array should have only even elements or it should have only odd elements. And we will try to convert our array into one of these two based upon which require lesser number of operations. So we know that in a single operation, we will add plus one to an element in this array. So let's say if we have an even element, so if I add plus one to this array, then it will get converted to an odd array. So this means that if I if I'll add plus one to an even element that it will get converted to an odd element. And similarly, if I'll add plus one to this odd element, then it will get converted to an even element. So it requires just one operation to convert an even to odd or odd to even. And similarly, if we want to convert three even elements into three odd elements, we will require three operations. And similarly, if you want to convert five odd elements into five even elements, you will require five such operations. Now, the approach here is very simple. Firstly, I'll count the number of odd numbers in this array and the number of even numbers in this array. So over here, we have one, two, three odd numbers and we have one, two even numbers. So our array has three odd numbers and two even numbers. So tell me which one is easier? Should I convert all the even numbers to odd or should I convert all the odd numbers to even? 
which one of these two would require lesser number of operations? The answer is very simple. We should convert the E1 to odd because E1 has minority, that is E1 has lesser number of elements. So it will, it will require less number of operations. So this will be our answer. So our answer is very simple. Count all the odd numbers in the array, all the even numbers in the array and print the minimum of odd and this even count. So in this case, we know that we will convert all the even elements since we have two even elements and three odd elements. So what I'll do is I'll convert this two to three and this four to five. And now we have all odd elements in our array and it required just two moves. So two is our answer. So before we actually move on to the code, uh, there is one more thing that I would like to share with you that if you really want to improve as a competitive programmer or if you want to excel at coding interviews or coding rounds or simply if you want to master data structures and algorithms, then you should consider watching our videos on these topics. So these topics are taught by top coding experts uh, who are who have been ICPC world finalist or who have cracked top product based companies like Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, Amazon, etc. So these will be your educators and they will teach you topics like dynamic programming, game theory, number theory and many advanced as well as beginner level courses that are suitable for you. So if you like these free classes, then what you can do is you can take the paid plus subscription. And one more thing, all this content is organized by CodeChef itself. So in the paid plus subscription, you will get 24 seven mentor support where a mentor would be someone like who is really good at competitive programming, like someone who is a seven star coder at CodeChef or who has a really good coding profile. And you will get many other additional features like a uh, you will, you will be part of a batch where you will, uh, where your batch will be taught every week in a fashion. So you will, you can compare your progress with your, with your batch mates and et cetera. And by registering for the paid plus subscription, uh, you can use my coupon code or simply while registering for any other pre like classes, you can use my coupon code, which is white magic three, three, three. So the code here is very simple. Firstly, I'll input T, which is the number of test cases. Then I'll use a loop to iterate throughout the test cases. And then I'll input N, which is the size of the array. Then I'll simply count the number of even and the number of odd elements in the array. And then I'll simply print the minimum of odd and even. And this completes the whole code. So let's just submit the code. So copy and paste and submit. So we got the correct answer.